In this video, we will explore calorimetry and work through some sample problems. First, the definitions of specific heat capacity and specific latent heat will be introduced and the formulas for the thermal energy transfer discussed. Then the heating curves will be interpreted with a focus on these concepts. Finally, calorimetry will be explored with sample problems to demonstrate the key points. The specific heat capacity of a substance is the energy required to change the temperature of one kilogram of the material by one degree Celsius, or one unit of Kelvin. It has the symbol lowercase c and units of joules per kilogram Kelvin. Note that the phase of the substance will affect the specific heat capacity. The formula Q equals mc delta T describes the amount of energy required for a given change in temperature of an object. Q is the energy transferred, m is the mass of the object, C is the specific heat capacity, and delta T is the change in temperature in units of Kelvin or Celsius. The specific latent heats of fusion and vaporization of a substance are the energy needed to change the phase of one kilogram of the material at its melting or boiling point respectively. It has the symbol capital L and units of joules per kilogram. The formula Q equals ML relates the energy Q required to change the phase of a mass M of a substance with the specific latent heat L. If we explore the heating curve in closer detail, we can relate some of the aspects of the graph to these concepts. In the sloping regions of the graph, the kinetic energy of the particles is increasing. These regions are described by the formula Q equals mc delta T. Notice that the gradient of the line is the rate of change of temperature. Materials with high specific heat capacities will require more energy to change temperature, and this will result in smaller gradients on the temperature time graph. Notice that the gradients of the sections on the graph relating to the solid, liquid, and gas phases all have different slopes, because the specific heat capacities of the different phases vary. When the substance is undergoing a phase change, the temperature remains constant and the gradient of the line is zero. Here the energy being transferred into the particles is increasing the distance between the particles, increasing their potential energy. The relationship Q equals ML applies here. The specific latent heat of vaporization is always greater than the specific latent heat of fusion for a substance. Therefore, if the rate of energy transfer remains constant, it will take more time for the liquid to undergo a change of state into a gas than it would for the same mass of the same material to undergo a change of state from a solid into a liquid. This is evident on the graph by the time period shown for the phase changes. When two objects with different temperatures are in contact with each other, thermal energy will transfer from the hot object to the cold object. Thermal energy will continue to transfer until both objects reach the same temperature or thermal equilibrium. This may involve a change of phase for an object before the final equilibrium temperature is reached. Because the energy is transferring from one object to another, the object at the higher temperature will be losing energy, causing its temperature to decrease or its phase to change and the object at the lower temperature will be gaining energy, causing its temperature to increase or its phase to change. According to the conservation of energy, the energy lost by the higher temperature object must be equal to the energy gained by the object at the lower temperature. Let's consider an example problem. A glass containing 500 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius is placed in a refrigerator for 10 minutes. The cooling curve below shows the temperature of the water during this time. Determine the rate of energy transfer from the water. The graph features a sloping section in which the temperature of the water is decreasing, so the relationship Q equals mc delta T applies here. Dividing both sides of this relationship by time gives us Q over T equals mc delta T divided by T. Q over T is the rate of energy transfer, or the power from the water, and delta T over T is the gradient of the line. The gradient can be found by taking the ratio of the change in temperature to the time for any two points on the graph. Using the first and last points of the line, we can find that the change in temperature is 8 degrees Celsius, and the time period is 10 minutes, or 600 seconds. Notice that the units of Kelvin and Celsius are both present here. The magnitudes of these temperature scales are equal, and since the formula only requires the change in temperature, there is no need to convert the units of Celsius into Kelvin. This gives a gradient of 0.013 Celsius per second. Subbing in the remainder of the given values and solving gives a rate of energy transfer of 27 watts.
Now we are told that the glass of water is removed from the refrigerator and 50 grams of water at 0 degrees Celsius is added to it. We're asked to determine the final temperature of the mixture. Thermal energy will transfer from the water in the glass to the cold water until thermal equilibrium is reached. The total amount of energy transferred into the cold water will be equal to mc delta t, with m being the mass of the cold water. The water in the glass will have transferred thermal energy into the cold water, and as a result, its temperature will have decreased. The energy transferred from the water will be equal to mc delta t, assuming no energy is exchanged with the surroundings. The energy gained by the cold water must be equal to the energy lost by the warm water, so these expressions can be set equal to each other. Note the use of the negative sign for the warm water. It has lost energy, so this must be accounted for. Substituting the known values into this equation and solving gives a final temperature of 293 Kelvin. Note the required unit conversions before the substitution. In summary, the specific heat capacity of a substance is the energy required to change the temperature of one kilogram of the material by one unit of temperature, either Celsius or Kelvin. It has the symbol lowercase c and units of joules per kilogram Kelvin. The specific latent heat of a substance is the energy required to change the phase of one kilogram of the material. It has the symbol capital L and units of joules per kilogram. The specific latent heat of fusion is the energy required to change the phase of one kilogram of a substance between a solid and a liquid. And the specific latent heat of vaporization is the energy required to change the phase of one kilogram of a substance between a liquid and a gas. On a heating cooling curve, the gradient of the line is inversely related to the specific heat capacity. Higher specific heat capacities will have lower gradients. The time period that a phase change occurs in is dependent on the specific latent heat. A higher specific latent heat will result in a longer time period on the graph. When two objects at different temperatures are in contact, thermal energy will transfer from the object with the higher temperature to the one with the lower. This transfer of heat through conduction will continue until thermal equilibrium is reached. This may result in a change of phase of the objects. The energy must be conserved through the process. The formulas Q equals mc delta t and Q equals ml can be used to solve these problems.